Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new part of the course we are going to be talking about RxJS error handling. We are going to learn how errors behave in RxJS, we are going to talk about how to catch errors, how to handle them, how to attempt to recover from errors and how to retry an observable if something goes wrong. In order to understand how RxJS errors work, let's simply trigger an error. We are going to go here to the home component, which corresponds to this list of courses, and we are going to make this HTTP observable fail. So in order to do that, we are going to open here the backend endpoint that is handling slash API slash courses, and we are going to make it error out. So slash API slash courses, if we open here our server.ts, we're going to see that this is being served by this route, get all courses. So if you open this file, we're going to see that we have here some code already present that is going to help us to error out this API call so that we can simulate an HTTP error. For the moment, in order to better understand RxJS error handling, we want this HTTP request to error out each time. So instead of sending back here to the client a valid JSON payload and the status of 200 OK, we're going to instead send back here an error response. We are going to send the status code 500 and we're going to send here as a JSON payload an error message. As we can see with this code, the error is going to occur each time that we open here the home component. Later, we are going to be using this code that we have here in order to simulate random errors. So this is going to help us to test some retry logic that we will implement. But right now, we want the error to occur each time. Let's now switch here to the terminal and restart our REST API server by running npm run server. So after a moment, we should have here the new version of the server up and running. Let's now try the home component and see what happens when this request errors out. We are going to switch here to a larger window and we are going to hit with the network tab opened the home component. So as you can see, we get here a failed request to the backend, 500 internal server error, and if you see the response, Indeed, it's the JSON payload with the error, as we would expect, and we see that we have here no data displayed on the screen. Let's now try to catch this error and see how can we handle it. Multiple strategies are available here. We can either catch this error and try to recover from it by, for example, providing an alternative value to the value that we were getting here from the backend. So instead of providing here the list of courses that we received from the backend, we can provide maybe an alternative value that would still make sense in this concrete use case. We can also catch the error, log it to the console and refrow it to an outer observable that is consuming this observable. And we can also try to retry the operation that just failed. So there we have three strategies that we are going to cover now. First, let's see how can we catch the error. We can catch the HTTP error by using here the catch error operator. So this operator is going to take here as the first argument an error and this function here is supposed to return an observable that is going to be used to continue the observable that has errored out. So as we know, according to the observable contract, this observable here, it's going to emit values and then it's either going to complete or error out. Because this observable, which is highlighted here, has errored out with the error on the backend, this observable will no longer emit any further values. What will happen then is that catch error is going to catch the error and it's going to trigger this function. And the goal of this function is to provide an alternative observable that the user of courses, in this case, this component can use in replacement of the observable that has just failed. So the output of this function here is an alternative error observable that is only going to be consumed by the component if the HTTP observable errors out. Another alternative is that this function throws an error again and then the courses observable is then going to be errored out, just like happened to the HTTP observable. 
let's first implement the first strategy, which is going to be, we are going to try to recover from the error by providing some alternative value to the component. For that, we need to return an observable here. So let's use here the of operator to return an observable that emits a single value. And this value needs to be an array of courses. So let's make this here an array and we could already return here the empty array to the component. This way we would get an empty list displayed. In order to show that this is working as expected, let's provide here some data. Let's open our server folder and inside it we are going to find a DB data file containing all the data that is displayed here in this application. So if we scroll up, we are going to see that we have here a list of courses, we are going to take here one valid value. Let's take this value and we are going to use it here in the catch error clause. So this observable is going to contain an array containing only one course. Let's now see this new logic in action. If we reload here our application, we're going to see that we have here a failed request but instead of having here an empty screen, we can see that the alternative error observable has kicked in and then the catch error operator subscribed to the alternative error observable. The error observable was subscribed to and its values started showing up in the courses stream. Going back here to our home component, notice that this observable returned here does not have to be built using the off operator. This can be potentially any observable that, for example, fetches data from an offline database when the network is down. When this recovery observable that gets created by this catch error function, when this errors out, the outer observable courses will also error out. And the same way when this observable emits its first value and then completes, the courses observable will then also complete. So this is a replacement observable that replaces the errored out observable. This error handling strategy that we just covered is the recovery observable error handling strategy. Let's now have a look at a couple other error handling strategies. We will now cover how to handle the error and then refrow it and we will also see how to retry the failed observable.